Welcome back to episode 85 of the ATD Baseball Podcast. Myself and Kyle. All-Star Week is here. Uh, at the time of this recording, it's basically 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, which means the Derby is about to start in about a half hour, so we're excited for that. Um, by the time you hear this tomorrow, the Derby will be over, so, you know, if we make predictions and one of us has to get it right, no, we did not do this after the Derby, like we did it before, um, so we have obviously no idea what the outcome is, but I'm excited. First half of the season is done. Like I said, a million times it's gone by really quick. But uh, before we get into everything that we want to discuss today, Kyle, how you doing? Um, I'm doing all right, man. This is, uh, this is obviously a bittersweet moment for baseball fans. I mean, we're getting into some very exciting festivities surrounding the All-Star Week. Uh, especially for us, man. I've said it in the last couple weeks here. Next time that we record, it's going to be in Cooperstown. Yes, I, in person. We can't get into that. Yes, we're going to be in person again. Um, we're going to be up there for the, for the ceremony, everything else. Um, so obviously, it's a very bittersweet time. Half the season's gone by. Like you said, it's gone very quickly. Um, you know, but there's some exciting things coming up. We have, obviously, the All-Star break uh, trade deadline. That's going to be fun. Um, yes. Cooperstown, and then, then that this is where the serious baseball comes into play. This is where we start shaping up for the for the postseason, everything else. So um, season's going by quick, yes, but at the same time, we have a lot of things to look forward to, and uh, that makes me super excited. How about you, Melo? How you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing good. Um, listen, we are not a. I'm just gonna say it. We're not a political show, obviously, but uh. 48 hours ago, it looked like the world was about to end. Looked like it yeah. for a split second there. Looked like it. But, um, yeah, everything is, uh, everything's, I mean, listen, everything's good in my life. Not in Dodgerland. The sky is falling. <laughs> They've lost, they, they played a full week of games. They only won one. And they blew leads in two games in Detroit, and they look horrible in Philly. Uh, we'll get into that maybe later, maybe not. I really don't want to talk about them, but, um. <laughs> kind of have to, but oh, I um, mean, I'm, we can. I, if, if you're down for it, because listen, I'm kind of in the same boat with you here. Kind of just uh, touch on it a little bit. We don't need to go into no long spiel. Kind of just touch and kind of go. That's pretty much. That's what I'll be doing with the Yankees. I I don't have too much thoughts. Okay, let's get it out now. Then. Uh, Dodgers have looked like shit for a month now. Um, and it seems like everybody's on the injured list right now. Todd Glass now is shut down. Now, I'm not concerned about him because it looks like, listen, he's got a, a lot of innings piled up on him. They just need to give him a breather. He's not pitching in the All-Star game. He's going because it's his first time. So he wants to experience everything in Texas and experience going to be an All-Star for the first time. Um, I'm not concerned about him. Yamamoto pushed to the 60-day deadline. 60-day IL, that could be a little concerning. But he is he has picked up a baseball. He has thrown 60 feet. Um so a lot of these guys that the Dodgers have thrown out there to pitch, you're not going to see those names in meaningful games and when everybody gets back healthy. But um, it's concerning, you know. And the only reason why the Dodgers, number one, the reason why this division lead hasn't slipped is because the NOS has been so bad the whole season. And number two, um, they're just not healthy. And I know... You know, a lot of our followers who saw my video yesterday and saw the meme I posted or whatever the other day, um, you know, it was like everybody's saying, oh, same old Dodgers, they're choking even before October. It's like, wait a minute, like, Boogie Betts is on the shelf. Max Muncy's on the shelf. The whole freaking pitching rotation's on the shelf right now. This is not the same team that you're going to see in six to eight weeks. It's just not. And I... Th I a part of me likes the fact that the Dodgers are struggling right now because, listen, every year this division is spoon-fed to them. By the, end of Jul by the middle of July, by the All-Star break, it's over. The race is over, and it's that feeling right now. But I kind of like the fact the Dodgers have to scrap for wins a little bit here. I like the fact that they're uncomfortable. I like the fact that they're going through this rough stretch. 
Because you know what? This is what shapes you into better teams in October. At least in my eyes. So, listen, I will gladly sacrifice a shitty to decent summer to have a great October and a great beginning of November. But they're going to be fine. They're going to be fine. They're going to get healthy. They're going to make a move at the deadline. The thing, Andrew Friedman loves to make the big move at the deadline. He got you Darvish in 2017. He got Manny Machado in 2018. He got Scherzer and Trey Turner in 2021. When the Dodgers go all in, they go all in. All in. And this has to be an all in situation. I've mentioned that from the beginning. And particularly in this last last month that the Dodgers have played pretty much 500 baseball. No question in my eyes that this is not going to be the same team in eight, six to eight weeks. And Andrew Friedman will do something big at the deadline. I can almost guarantee that. Whether it's a Garrett Crochet, whether it's a, a Luis Robert Jr., a package of that, whether it's a name we're not even talking about right now. Mason Miller, who knows? But I, I just, this is one of those years that you have to go all in. And I really think Andrew Friedman's going to do that. He did it in the offseason. You have to do it again at the deadline. Is it, is it frustrating watching the Dodgers right now? It is. Because this is what's supposed to be smooth sailing and, you know, everybody was supposed to be playing great. Obviously, that's not going to happen. That's the ebb and flows of a 162-game season. But this is just not the same team that they're going to roll out there in October. Dodger fans know that. I know that. I think every Major League Baseball fan should know that. But just there's no excuse for losing a series to Detroit, especially the fashion that you did. You blew a 9-4 to four lead in the ninth inning on Saturday, and you had a 3-2 lead going in the ninth inning on Sunday. No excuses. But this is not the same team that you're going to see in six to eight weeks. They'll be fine. And I'm glad that they're going to have to scrap for wins. And I'm glad they're going to have to earn it this year. That's all I got. Couldn't have said it better myself. Um, heading on over to the Yankees side of things in the last 10 games, they're 4-6. and six. Uh, It's obviously an improvement from the way they've been playing. Uh, still obviously not up to par. This team is capable of a lot of things. Um, they're just going through it right now. It sucks. Um, every team seems to go through it at some point of the season, and it seems like both of our teams are starting to go through that a little bit. Uh, Yankees a little bit worse, uh, I will say that. But when it comes down to it, the Yankees are 58 and 40 at the All Star break. I, it could have been so much better. They could have ran away with this division, especially the way Baltimore has been playing. However, the reason why this division is not out of hand quite yet in Baltimore's favor is because of the way they've been playing. So the Yankees find themselves one game back in first place. And with all circumstances, I can't complain about that. It's not the end of the world. The Yankees can very easily still come back. And they just took two out of three in Baltimore. They should have swept when it comes down to it. But Volpe, just routine ground ball, just it honestly just sums up the entire way that the Yankees have been playing. However, um... Kind of like the Dodgers here, I'm going to say the same thing with the Yankees. Brian Cashman, I mean, I feel like this is an all-in year. He needs to be able to go out at the deadline and not be afraid to get rid of some pieces in the farm. Obviously, Spencer Jones and Jason Dominguez should be untouchable. Um, but for the right guy, this is an all-in year. No prospects can be held, I believe. Um, but going to the all-star break... Could be better, but it could definitely be worse. So I can't complain too much. Yankees sit at 58-40, and 40, and tomorrow I get to watch uh, Juan Soto and Aaron Judge bat back-to-back -back for the American League. So I think that's pretty damn cool. So for me, um, regroup, get ready for the deadline, and uh, come out swinging in the second half of the season. That's all I have. 
And you get to see Clay Holmes go out, come out of that bullpen. God damn it. Oh, come on now. <laughs> yeah, Clay, damn it. All-star, man. He's an all-star. Yeah. I'll, I'll give him the credit he's due, uh, stats-wise. But uh, as every Yankee fan will know, uh, when Clay Holmes comes in, it may not seem it to the naked eye, but when he comes in, that game is not guaranteed. I don't give a shit who you ask. If you ask any Yankee fan, that game is not guaranteed when Clay Holmes comes in. That's all I have to say. Let's get to the All-Star Game festivities. Um, yeah, let's do it. Home run derby tonight. It's going to start here in about half hour. Um, mm-hmm. Let's just – let I'll give you the field, and then we'll just start making predictions. Or if you got any anything, hot takes, whatever, you can just throw it out there. Gunnar Henderson, Marcelo Zuna, J. Ram, Jose Ramirez, Pete Alonso, uh, Teoscar Hernandez, Adolis Garcia, Bobby Witt Jr., and Alec Bohm. So – I think the way this works is the top four advance to the semis, and then obviously those four will match up against each other. I think it's one and four versus two and three or something like that, and then the two meet in the final. Um, who do you have as your top four coming out? Um, Who's got no shot at this? No shot? Alec I'm... Mm, I hate to say it, but I agree with you here. It's I, I feel like this field, Bohm is just not a home run hitter. But yet again, I'm not taking anything away from his game. I think he's a phenomenal young young star who's in the making. I think he has the potential to be a superstar in this league. Um, but in the home run derby, he does. 100% he does. Um, but in the home run derby, it's got to be Bohm. These names, uh, there's not a name on here who I could pick over Bohm. Um, I'll give my four then, just to make it out of okay. the first round. I think Marcelo Zuna, unfortunately, uh, Pete Alonso, uh, I think Adolis Garcia is gonna put on a show for the home fans. He'll get out of round one. Uh, I, I'm gonna go Tay Oscar. I don't want okay. to sound like a Dodger Homer here, but I'm going to give it to Tay Oscar. I think those are my okay. four. Ozuna, Alonzo, Hernandez, and Adolis Garcia. Okay. I'll give you my four. I'm going to go Pete Alonzo. I'm going to go Ozuna. I have to agree with you. Garcia in his own ballpark, I think that's going to play a factor. Uh, he's comfortable there. I think he's going to smash out a lot of homers. Um, final pick here. This is going to be interesting. Mm, I'm going to go J-Ram. That's, it was between I'm, him or Teoscar for me. Uh, it's so hard, but I'm going to go J-Ram. So for me, um, I have Alonzo, Garcia, Ozuna, and Ramirez. Going to the final, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be Pete Alonso and Adolis Garcia. Ooh, okay. Now, I could be wrong. These two, they could be meeting the semis, and I could completely butcher this. But yeah, I don't know how the seeding works after that, but I'm going to go with my final Garcia and Alonso. Okay. Um... I'm going to go Pete Alonzo and J. Ram for my two. And my winner, Pete Alonzo. I think Pete Alonzo is my winner here. Ding, ding, ding. Pete Alonzo. I think We're he wins. We're in sync here. Yep. Redemption. Yeah. Really? I, I'm, I'm telling you something. I don't think... And as much as we dog on Pete Alonso with the home run derby and the way he treats it, there's got to be something behind that, right? He wants this. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Man, so no love to Gunnar Henderson or – man. It, it's, it's, it's hard, man. 
because I'm going to go for the home run hitters. I've said it week after week. Uh, that's, that's who I'm going to go for. There you go. Okay. Um, let's go to the game. So you, and this got a lot of attention. You did not want Paul Skies on this team. <laughs> I knew and this was going to come up. I knew. And they doubled down, and they made him the starter of this game. Do you have a problem with that? You going to double down oh, here? Or are you going to are you gonna come with us to the people that love this? Now that he's in it, I can't complain because – like I, I, I tried stating this as best as I could without getting absolutely demolished in the comments. But yet again, no matter how I explained it, nobody gives a shit. They only look at me saying that I don't think he should have gotten in. Um, <clears throat> by the way, real quick before I forget this, I do have a statement on the American League side of things. Um, but I'll save that for a little bit later. Um, going back to Paul Skeens here. And now that he's in it, there's nothing I can do about it. And if you want to start off the the All-Star game with a bang, you're going to go with Paul Skeens. I mean, like I said, I'm not taking anything away from him. I think he's a very talented uh, young young pitcher in this league, and I think he has all the potential to be the best starting pitcher in baseball in the coming years, whether that be a year down the road, whether that be two, three years, whatever it is. I think he has the potential to be the best in baseball. Um, with that oh, being I said, I have no problem with it. Yeah. <laughs> with that being said, I have no problem with him being the starter. Um, I just, you know, it was my opinion at the time. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, so if you want to start off the all-star game with a bang, there you go. That's the man to do it. So if you were Tori Lavella, would you have made him your starter or no? You would have went somewhere else. Um, I get why he did it. That wasn't so, the question. Uh, it's hard, man. Um, uh, it's uh, see, and it's okay. So when Have I look a at the starters, kid and wait your goddamn turn. <laughs> when I look at the starters, I uh, no, I probably would have went skiing still. Okay. Um. Maybe I would have given the nod to Ronaldo Lopez. Um, but out of these group of guys, I, actually, I, I would have won Chris Sale. That's where I would have won. Yeah, okay. There you go. But with him on the shelf, I I guess Skeens is all right. But I get why he did it. Um, Todd. Tatis, I I was very surprised. I had I was unaware that Fernando Tatis Jr. got hurt over the weekend, or something happened, mm -hmm. um, because he's not in the lineup and he's not playing tomorrow. So when they read aloud Teoscar Hernandez, I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I'm like, he didn't even he didn't make it. He didn't make the starting. And I was like, oh yeah, Tatis is hurt. So I'm happy that Shohei Otani is gonna not be the only Dodger out there in the starting lineup. <laughs> I mean, because let's be real realistic. If Mookie was healthy, he would have been the starting shortstop over Trey, whether he deserved it or not. Um, he they, mm -hmm. he would have been in there, and um, yeah. you would have had three Dodgers in there. But I'm I'm fine with two. Um, I have no the only issue that I have, and here's my hot take for the All Star game here. If Paul Skeens Skeens. Let me try that again. If Paul Skeens strikes out the side in the first inning and makes it look really easy, he should win All-Star Game MVP. Oh, come on. No way. No. <laughs> I can't if get if the National that. League wins wins too? If listen, if he no. pumps 101, 102 and he strikes out Stephen Quam, Gunnar Henderson, and Juan Soto in order with ease. And granted, nothing crazy happens in the game. There's just a couple runs scored here and there. He should win All-Star Game MVP. Do you know how many things would have to happen for that for Skeens to get All-Star Game MVP? Yeah. I That's, saw Shane uh... Bieber get it in 2019 
when he was ho- when they were hosting in Cleveland, he struck out the side, and then he got it. That was a different scenario. He came in like in the fourth inning, but I really believe that. Hmm, that's oh. that's a hard one for me to get behind. Again, only if he strikes out the side. Okay. If he strikes out two, shouldn't get it. If he strikes out one and gets a couple grounders, shouldn't get it. But if he strikes out the side and makes it look very easy and he only has to throw like 12 pitches, he's your MVP of the All-Star game. That's Granted, National League has to win too, obviously. Which I'll get okay. to that in a minute. Which... Okay. I I feel like it would have to be a very low scoring game. It would have to be maybe getting RBIs on some like some That's ground outs or something like that. It, a lot has to I, happen. It does. And if I if obviously I, if, if I was in a state where gambling was legal, I would put money on Paul Skies to be the MVP of the All Star game. Okay. It's that's a tough one for me to get behind just because of the well obviously you know you said hot take totally understand that um it's just the the factors that go into that and obviously both these lineups are very star studded there's a reason why it's the all star game for me I just feel like I'm gonna go into this thinking that it's gonna be a high scoring game maybe mids to close to tens kind of scoring um yeah I that. Yeah, <laughs> we'll go with that, yeah. Also, another thing, too, to Nick pick this lineup for the American League. Listen, I understand that you're trying to put, you know, I know it's hard for the managers to treat this like a TV show, but technically it yeah. is like a, a TV show entertainment business tomorrow. Entertainment, yeah. But I'm sorry, but Aaron Judge should be top three in that lineup. You have Thank to you. put Paul Skeens against one of the best hitters in the world in Aaron Judge. That is a mistake, and Bruce Bochy missed out on that. Now listen, he's the manager. I understand that managers see it from a different perspective. They're trying to manage it like a baseball game, as they should. But Aaron Judge could possibly break his own home run record again this season. He's on a he had an incredible first half and you have Paul Skeens who had an incredible who's had an incredible year of his professional life so far but he's had a he's had a successful incredible month and a half to get to this point. I'm sorry but you have to have those guys go up against each other. And this is not the first time I've been upset about something like this. I was upset that Derek Jeter didn't get to go up against Clayton Kershaw in his last All-Star game in 2014. That pissed me off because I wanted to see that. You have an old generation versus the new generation or the current generation. And I think and I think, I'm not going to blame MLB because they have no say-so in this. I, I'm upset at Bruce Bochy and the, the American League managers for not figuring that out. I'm sorry, but Judge should be in the top three. Uh, yeah, I, I do agree with you. And I look at it this way, too. <clears throat> and partial reason why I'm totally agreeing with you here is Gunnar Henderson has let off for Baltimore basically all season long. What, what's the difference between putting him in the leadoff spot versus the two-hole? And Soto's been hitting in the two-hole. Judge has been hitting in the three-hole. Your starting lineup should go Henderson, Soto, Judge. I'm so, I understand your prototypical lineup is going to be Stephen Kwan. He's a guy who gets on base, and he's he's a, one of the best contact hitters in the sport. I get it. But like you said, entertainment-wise, you're going to want to see Henderson Soto Judge go against Skeens. That's just how it is. So, yeah, I totally do agree with you there. Now, this was something that I wanted to bring up, and I kind of just touched on it a little bit ago when I was talking about Skeens. My biggest issue with what Bruce Bochy did with this lineup, is he named Corbin Burns the starter Ooh. for the AL. Okay. And I had I'm a feeling like this will come up today. There is absolutely no world where Corbin Burns starts over Tarek Skubal. I'm sorry. That yeah. is my main nitpick with this lineup. 
I get it. Like, yes, we're going to see Scooball in the game at some point, whatever. But there is no reason in the world why he should not be starting this All-Star game. That is my biggest gripe with this lineup, and it's such a pet peeve for me. Because Scooball is obviously the AL Cy Young leader right now. And if everything goes as planned, he should win Cy Young. This man is doing things in Detroit that's honestly just, it's insane. And I love what Scooball has brought to Detroit. He's actually bringing in fans. He's bringing in Detroit baseball again. That's things that you want to see out of these smaller market teams. So, for me, I would have absolutely loved to see Scooball start over Burns. That was my big my big gripe with this lineup and what Bruce Bochy did. And if people want to say it's not the sexiest name or it's not the sexier name, bullshit. They started Shane McClanahan two years ago in L.A. Exactly. And he was clearly the best yep. pitcher in the American League. I mean, we saw last year, too, Garrett Cole versus uh, Zach Gallen. Zach Gallen was clearly one of the best pitchers in the National League. And he earned it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, get, I think it's just... Corbett Burns has been... I think this has to do with his time in the National League. There was probably years where they thought Corbett Burns should have got it. And he didn't. Yeah. And I think it carried over into the American League. I I don't have an issue with it. I, 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 I have a problem with it, too. Like, I, I kind of... I, I made the prediction when we were doing our All-Star Game predictions. It was going to be... Shota Imanaga versus Spencer uh, versus uh, Scooball, and mm-hmm. I didn't get either right, but that's not the point of this. Yeah, I completely get why people are upset about that. I mean, Corbin Burns is still pretty damn good too. But again, I understand. Oh, yeah. I understand. <laughs> I understand. I, I'm. I can see why people are upset. Yeah, that was that was my biggest thing. I thought for sure Scooball was a lock to start the start for the AL, um, and when I heard, I believe it was today that it was announced that Burns was starting. Yep. Um, don't get me wrong, I, I, I don't want to take anything away from Burns, he's a phenomenal pitcher, um, but when it comes down to it, I think just Scooball should have gotten the nod, for sure. Um, things that he's doing this season is pretty damn impressive. Um, and like I said too, like obviously the name's not all there, Corbin Burns is a much bigger name than Tarek Scooball, I get that, but if you want to use your platform to kind of advertise some of these younger guys, these up and coming guys and smaller market teams. Okay, I'm sorry, but if Stephen Kwan is gonna lead off this game for the AL, there's no reason why Terry Scooball should not be pitching. Just the way I look at it. Who's gonna win the game? Dumb question, but Oh come on. Come on now. Who's gonna win the game? Gonna who's going to win the game and who's going to be who's uh what's the final score and who's your MVP? Final score. I'm going to go 9 to 7 in Jeez. favor of the American League. I think it's going to be high scoring. I uh, I don't nine, I think this is a pitching matchup here. I think this is a pitching game. Okay. I'm going to go 9 to 7 American League with my captain. Oh Aaron my Dutch god. Team. Come on. Come on. Best player, best player of the season in the first half. What better way to cap it off than winning All-Star Game MVP? Stanton did it two years ago. Oh. Now it's Judges. All right. Uh, I'm going to go 4-3 National League. Okay. And I already said it. Paul Skies is going to be your MVP of the All-Star Game. Ooh. I'm going to go with that. I'm telling you. I, I, I really okay. believe that. Um, and if okay. I can just say something to the National League, listen, you finally won last season for the first time in 11 years. Start a winning streak tomorrow. My whole life, nope. I have been, I have, <laughs> I have watched this National League side get embarrassed by the American League. We've lost some close games. We've been blown out in some all-star games. This is our time. National League needs to stand up, and we need to start a winning streak of our own. I'm tired of the American League winning it all the goddamn time. It's our turn to start a winning streak. And damn it, I think it starts tomorrow. Let's go, National League. We, Let's go. We let you have one. We let you have one last year. Um, tomorrow, we're going to get back on track, and we're going to go back to the way that it should be. 
and the way that it's always been. It's the American League always tops the National League. That's where it's going to go. All right. <laughs> uh, so. Time to embarrass because, ourselves, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> um, Everybody enjoy the All-Star game. Everybody enjoy the home run derby. You'll probably hear our react. Hopefully you'll hear our reactions to it as the throughout the series, how throughout the couple days here. But uh yeah, let's get to the fun stuff here. So obviously we make a bunch <laughs> of predictions um throughout during the off season and now it's time to kinda of look back at them. So Oh boy. I don't know where you want to start with this, but let's just I wanna start in in the American League East. Um, we both have the identical standings. We both picked the Yankees to win the division. We had the Orioles in second. We both had the Rays in third. We had the Blue Jays in fourth, and we had the Red Sox in dead last. And, of course, I don't think the standings is going to end up like that. No. And the funny thing is, this is probably our better predictions. Yes. But... Right now, Red Sox are in third, Rays are in fourth, and the Blue Jays are in last. So that's not good. Uh, we both took the under on the Boston Red Sox win total at 79 and a half. They're currently 53 and 42 at the All Star break. That could be a close one. Yeah. But I think they're going to get it, damn it. I think they're going to get it. I, I agree with you. We both took the under on the Blue Jays' win total at 87 and a half. They currently have 44 win. wins, and that looks like a lock right now. <laughs> now we both took the over on the Rays at 85 and a half wins, and they're currently at 48 and 48. That's going to be tough. That's going to be tough, I and I don't it. like that. Yeah. I can see it happening, but also I I would not be shocked if it doesn't happen. Both had the over, we both had the overs on the Orioles and the Yankees. The Yankees at 93, 93 and a half. Orioles at ninety and a half. They're both at fifty eight. I feel good about that. I think those two are gonna hit it. I like that one. Yeah, if I'm a betting man, I'm gonna say yes. Uh, but the Yankees, I feel like go either way, just based on, uh, based on, last few seasons that I've seen this fucking team watch but anyway central this is crazy um yeah we the, we both had the twins winning the division which i mean that could still happen they're only four and a half games out of first place uh mm -hmm. we both had the royals in second place that looked really good and eh, it's kind of falling off a bit. We had the Tigers in third. They're currently in fourth. We had the Guardians in fourth place. That's tough. That's bad. And now they're currently in first with, like, the second best record in the American League. And yep. we had the White Sox dead last. And obviously we're going to be right about that one. Um, mm -hmm. Now, Kyle, you said this. It's hard for me to say that the Guardians are going to have a bounce back year. I will 100% put my... Yeah, I will admit when I'm wrong. Um, I'm an honest man. Um, I was wrong. Extremely. <laughs> that was probably yeah. one of my worst... It, that was one of my, if not the worst take I had all preseason. Um, I put my foot in my mouth with that one, for sure. Um I didn't expect it. I did not see this Guardians team making any kind of noise. I thought they were going to finish. Um, where did I? Where did I say here? Fourth place. Um, that's looking absolutely terrible right now. Um, but hey, I'm I'm kind of glad that I was wrong. This Guardian team is very fun to watch. It really yeah, is. They are. Uh, they're doing things. They're doing things I didn't expect. Um, so props to them. But yeah, I will admit when I was wrong and. This is one of those times where I was 100% wrong. <laughs> uh, let's see what else here. Let's let, let's see what else. Uh, to the win totals, we you had the under 
on Twins 86 and a half. And I took the over. Uh, they're currently 54 and 42. That could be a little iffy. I, I, I think they'll get it. Okay. Okay. I, I think they will. Well, that's not what you thought in the beginning. but uh... No, it is, it is not. <laughs> not. Not at all. Tigers. We both took the under at, at 81 and a half wins. They're currently 47 and 50. That could very well be a team that finishes 81 and 81. Yeah. And I'm going to be so upset. And again, keep tabs on this. I swear to God, if if I don't get that, if I miss that under because of the Dodgers fucking up this weekend with those two comeback wins, oh, I'm going to be so upset. That's going to piss me off. If the Dodgers were the reason that I get that Tigers under prediction wrong, oh, I'm going to be so upset. So please keep a tab on that. I will. Um, I will. We both took the under on the Cleveland Guardians. That's looking... That's 79 like and a half wins. And we both took the under, and they're at 58 right now. We're losing that one. Oh, yeah. For sure. Uh, we all took the over on the, on the Royals. 73 and a half, which at the time, that was a joke of a number. And I think they're going to mm-hmm. get that. They're, they're better than a 73-win team. Me, yeah, me too. Going out west, uh, with the with the uh, with the AL West, we both had the Astros winning the division. We had the Rangers. We had identical here. We had mm-hmm. Astros winning the division. We had Rangers in second, Marlins in third, Angels in fourth, and the A's in dead last. And uh, we got the first two teams, the last two teams, right? But the top three is working. It, it's going to be interesting. It is. Um, this one, yeah. okay, so the AO West, I feel this AO West could shape up to be, we could get everything correct except for Seattle and Texas. Just flip-flop them at the end of the season, that yeah. is. But these top three teams... Like Houston's coming out of nowhere now. Yeah, that team scares. Me. I'm I'm gonna tell you something. The Houston Astros scare the shit out of me because what they've done in the last you know couple weeks here, leading up to the All Star break, has scared the living shit out of me when it comes to being a Yankee fan. Because if I I swear to God, if I have to meet Houston in in fucking October again, I'm gonna be pissed because it was finally looking like we were gonna get a postseason without Houston in it. And now here they come again, working their damn magic, and just pushing their way back to first place. I believe they're only a couple games out of uh, out of first here, and I, these predictions could very well shape up to be one of our best. I will say that. I agree. Uh, I said this is an easy over for the Angels, and their over under win total was. Seventy-two and a half. Seventy-two and a half. Um, I, I don't. Th- I don't know if that's gonna be easy, because they're currently forty-one and fifty-five. I'm gonna be struggling for that one. Can yeah, the Angels somehow to squeeze thirty-one more wins, or thirty-three more wins? I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know if that team does it. Uh, we all took the over on the Astros, ninety-two and a half, which they can still easily hit that number. Um, they can. We all took the over on the Texas Rangers at 80, 88 and a half. Now that's where it can get interesting, because we're gonna find out if they're gonna hit that number in the next two weeks. Because if they start selling at the deadline, they're not hitting that number. Nope. Or if they add pieces at the deadline, they'll hit that number. They're currently 46 and 50, the Texas Rangers. Uh, we both took the over on that. So, and then we both took the under on the uh, on the Mariners, 87 and a half. It's another That's one. It's gonna be a tough one. And there are 52 yeah. wins right now. It's 
going to be interesting to see how this division plays out. Very interesting. Uh, I'm going. Let's go to the National League now. Uh, AL East. I'm very proud of this one. I said at the beginning of the se- before the beginning of the season, the Mets will be in contention for the final wild card spot going into September. They're right in the thick of it. They're only a half a game out of that last spot. Or no 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 excuse me. They have they would have the final spot in the wild card. They would be the last team to get in. At forty nine and forty six. I feel good about that one. I'm gonna pat myself on the back. I knew this Mets team was they're a lot better now. They got off to a horrible start and I thought I was never gonna hit that. But Yeah. I feel good. I think that one's they're- gonna last. Even if they don't make the postseason, I'm I'm still gonna be right on that. Going into the season, you and I were high on the Mets. Yes. And we got a lot of shit, not only in the comments, but pretty much pretty much everywhere, that we got a lot of shit for taking the Mets and saying that they would be right there. I don't think... I'm not sure if I agreed with you on that statement or not, but I did agree with you on the Mets. Yes. I did. took their... We, you, and I, you and I both took their over. Yes. And I felt comfortable doing that. And now, one other thing here I want to pat myself on the back with, and maybe it's just out of pure luck, out of pure just because this team is just so damn injured, I took the under. I was the only one to take the under on the Atlanta Braves this season. That is very true. I think you're going to get that. I think I might. And maybe because it's injuries, but or just damn near just good luck, but I was the only one to take the under. And... That might come true. So, wow, I'll give you credit for that one. I didn't even see that until now. Yes, I, I had to bring that out. Come on, we <laughs> both took the under seventy-eight and a half with the Marlins. We're gonna get that, and I feel good about it. We're definitely hitting Me that too. one. Thirty, there are thirty-three wins right now. I think we're gonna get yeah. that. I um, I don't see. <sighs> Standings wise, of course. I don't I mean, see a world we where we all they pick the Braves to win. We, no, 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 no. The Marlins, no, absolutely mm. not. No. Um, we both obviously picked the Braves to win the division. We both had we had identical again here. We were in sync with a lot of these. I noticed. Uh, yeah. We had the Braves, Phillies, Mets, Marlins, and uh, Nationals in that order. Um. I kind of wish we would have flipped the Nationals. That's the only thing I don't feel good. I feel bad about. I wish I would have. I wish I would have known that the Marlins were going to be. I mean, the Washington Nationals were going to be a lot better. But yeah. you're not going to hit them all. And your MVP of this division was Ronald Acuna Jr. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously we yeah. didn't know and, and my, that he was going to get hurt. Did you see my Sion? See my Sion? Oh yeah, Kodai Senga. <laughs> I got screwed there. <laughs> Double. Yeah. Um, I ain't cent- hitting those. Central. Two more divisions here. Uh, I said that I guaranteed before the season even started, like in the middle of February, that the Cubs were locked to win the NL Central. <laughs> They're currently in last place right now. Uh, that's probably going to be my worst take of the season. That's the one that's going to... I hate that I said that. Absolutely don't like it. It felt great at the time. And when the season started, oh, yeah. it felt good. Didn't happen. I, I, think happen what's obviously. Even, I think what's even worse is the fact that you and I put Milwaukee at four. Yeah, that well, that's bad too. And we both took the <laughs> under. I had no expectations for the Brewers this season. None. I did not expect that lineup to hit like that. Yeah, and we both took the under on their win total at 76.5. Yeah, that's looking like that's terrible. That's really bad. Um, we both took the over on the Cubs, and we both took the over on the St. Louis Cardinals. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Um I 
I damn it. I did I screenshot it? I think I did. Or I forgot to screenshot it. Anyways, one of us said that Oh, here we go. I have it right here. You said this. This is why I screenshot it. Um oh, oh boy. I would be willing to put money that they won't be that bad again. The St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> I mean, they're in second oh, place. Technically, they're not. Yeah. Technically, I mean, they're not. I mean, you got to feel good about that. Technically, they're not. But at the same time, I didn't. I didn't expect it to be. I expected more out of them than what they're giving me right now. Okay. That's what I have to say. Technically, I am correct on my statement, but when it comes down to it, it's just not as good as what I expected them. So. I'm okay with that. I, I I can live with that. We both took the over on the Cincinnati Reds win total mm-hmm. at um eighty two and a half. They're currently they currently have forty seven wins. It's a lot of ground to make up. Yeah. Last division here going out west. And I'm I'm going to call myself out for this because I did mention this from the beginning of the season. We didn't make a quote of it or anything, but I remember saying it. Two things. Number one, and this is both Diamondbacks related. Number one, I said that the Arizona Diamondbacks were going to have over 90 wins, that they were a lock for 90 wins. And number two, and this is probably the worst one, I said that Corbin Carroll was going to finish top three in MVP voting this season. I said that in our in our predictions when we were doing the NL West. That, that's that's but probably... That, was, that wasn't a crazy statement, though. Right, at the time. No. I just didn't think he was going to have a complete sophomore slump. Yeah. Not at all. Uh, we, again, in sync with everything. Mm-hmm. Dodgers, Diamondbacks, Padres, Giants, and Rockies. So far, now so far it's been the Padres that have been in second place pretty much the whole season. Um, do I not have the win total here for the Dodgers? For As the okay, real quick. If if the season were to end today, you and I would be one hundred percent correct on our standings for the NL West. So, oh yeah, that's true, huh? Don't know if that's gonna keep up, but as of now, I think we both have to feel pretty good with that going into uh, going into the second second half of the season here. Definitely, uh, I'm just trying to look for the over under win totals here for the NL West. Scrolling through, I do our, not see. Scrolling through our account again, because uh, we did. Here we go. Damn, we took a lot of overs here. Uh, we we took overs on every team in this division. Okay. Dodgers at 103. Three and a half. Okay. Uh, Diamondbacks at 84 and a half. Giants at 81 and a half. That's going to be a tough one. Yeah. Padres at 81 and a half. I feel good about that one. Um, Me too. And then the Rockies at 60 and a half. We took the over on that. They're currently at 34 wins. That's going to be tough. I don't know how I feel about San Francisco and Colorado. Yeah, those are not good. Uh, No. Yeah. Um, And one last thing here, and we just went through the divisions. One last thing here, and we'll get out of here and call it a day. Do you want to make a change to your World Series prediction? I believe I had Yankees Dodgers, right? You had Yankees Dodgers. Yankees in seven, I think I said. <laughs> yeah, you had Yankees Dodgers. Do you want to okay. change that? Um, baseball fan in me wants to say Phillies. I want to. I want to put the Phillies in there. However, when it comes to October, I think this Dodger team is going to be different. So I'm going to keep my prediction. Oh, I hope you're I, right. I, oh, I hope you're right, Kyle. 
I, I think this Dodger team is going to be different, and I think they are going to right the ship at the correct time, and I don't, I don't, I don't see anybody in the National League beating this Dodger team. God, I hope you're right. I said Dodgers over the Orioles in six. I'm staying pat, too. I'm sorry I'm staying okay. pat, Kyle. I'm sorry. It's all good. I'm staying it's, pat. All good. it's all good. It's all good. I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll retract everything I just fucking said, and I'll go for No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Understandable. Um, yeah. Um, Kyle, unless you got anything else, that's it. That's it for the first half of the I don't think season. so. That that puts a bow on it, and uh, next time you'll see us, Cooperstown. It's uh, it's coming up very quickly. So first half of the season in the books. It's been a it's been a memorable one. I'll say that. Definitely. Um. All right. Well. Look out for our content. Look out for our stuff in Cooperstown. And we'll see you in a couple days. <laughs>